Hey guys. So today's video is going to be all about hair and hair is not exactly my forte by any stretch of the imagination, but you guys have been asking me to talk about my hair for a very, very long time. I've recently got super into hair care and I'll explain why throughout the course of this video, but we're going to talk about hair and I don't know if you can tell, there's a lot of products back there. So lots of hair care favorites. There's actually even a tutorial in here about how I get this hairstyle. It's the one I've been wearing the most recently. Again, you guys have been asking me about it and this video is going to be long, so I'm going to get into it toot sweet. But before we get started, make sure you check the down bar for links on my social media platforms. Thumbs up the video if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you are new here. You know you want to. If you're not new here, hey, what's up? How's your mom and him? Come hang out on Patreon for bonus content and the book club. In the month of April, we read, we read the 12-month year. We have our book club meeting on May second and there will be a video going up on patreon that's kind of like a primer for the book club so even if you didn't read the book the video will kind of give you an idea of what we talk about in the book and then you can still participate in the zoom meeting book club which is so much fun i kid you not it is so cool to see everyone's faces and have like this really awesome discussion about the ideas in our book. So anyway, all that being said, let's just get started. So obviously right now I am blonde. My natural hair color is kind of a medium ashy, medium to dark ashy brown. Went through a period, if you guys are OG subscribers, you know this, where my hair was black, pitch black, and it was box dye black. In fact, I went from blonde to dark <laughs> to a uh, box dye black. And I just was feeling that like I'm very much the type of person that changes my hair and my style depending on like eras. I'm kind of like Madonna in my head, I guess. Wow, Brittany, what a weirdo. And I was going through a phase where I wanted black hair and it was black. I kept it that way for about a year and I decided within a year or so of doing that that I wanted to get rid of it. And that's when I went to Fire Engine Red. So I was fire engine red for about, I don't know, six weeks, cause I couldn't deal with it. It's so much work to have your hair that color. So it was fire engine red and then I went brown. And I was brown from 2000, early 2017 until mid 2019. What I'm trying to tell you guys is my hair has been through it and it's been a process to get it to this color. And when it comes to my advice for going lighter, I can only go off of what I've experienced and that is take your sweet time with it. This took two years to get to. And I'm not gonna mess with it anymore because I'm so concerned with preserving the integrity of my hair. I'm telling you all this because you might consider some of these uh, products and measures I take to protect my hair a little excessive. But for me, like I said, I've put a lot of bleach on it at this point and I really wanna grow it. So let's start off by talking about product, I guess, and then we'll pop over to the tutorial and then we'll wrap it up. It brings us to our sponsor of the video, which is Lily Silk. So Lily Silk is an amazing online retailer where you can get tons of different different mulberry silk, high quality mulberry silk pieces for a fraction of what the other guys want. They have everything from blouses to pajamas to pillowcases, which we'll get into momentarily. Um, bedding, anything you can think of that can come in silk, they sell. Speaking of blouses, you guys wanna hear the most like heartbreaking thing ever. They sent me this stunningly beautiful black silk blouse, which has actually been on, like I keep a list of pieces I wanna buy and a black silk blouse has been on there for so long. Literally after I saw this picture of Selena Gomez, I was like, bet, putting that outfit together. So I was so excited that they sent this to me, but unfortunately it's just a little too ch tight on my chest cause your girl's busty. So I'm definitely gonna order a bigger size and then get it tailored to fit everywhere else. But I'm so upset about it because it's just, the most luxurious, like beautiful thing. I could just sit here and like touch it all day. It's beautiful. So definitely check out their blouses and their pajamas. In terms of their attire, that is what I am most interested in personally. I'm so sad that this thing didn't work out for me. Please send warm wishes in the comment section below to get me through this difficult and trying time. But they also sent me a couple of other pieces which have been so helpful in my hair care routine and are things that were already on my list. Like I literally have like an Amazon and a whip. I have so many lists going, you guys, I'm such a nerd, of things I wanted to buy for my hair and silk pillowcases and silk scrunchies were at the top of the list. I only wear my hair up very rarely and only a certain way. That certain way is with silk scrunchies. So they sent me these beautiful silk scrunchies. I have like a traditional big fat one 
there's a medium one, and there's this little skinny guy. In the tutorial, you'll see me use this to section my hair. Like I only use, use silk scrunchies now. It's the only way I put my hair up because it's so much gentler on your hair. And mulberry silk in general is exceptionally good for your hair and your skin. And that is why I like these so much compared to other silk scrunchies that I've seen some silk scrunchies on like Sephora that are ridiculously expensive. And these are so, so perfect. I'm really glad they sent me these. They also sent me silk pillowcases. And that's been on my beauty wish list for a long time as well. Not even just for my hair. Well before I started hearing about the benefits of silk pillowcases for your hair, I had already heard that they're better for your skin. So these pillowcases are very breathable, absorb excess moisture. They are so, you know how like, like that phrase, cooler than the other side of the pillow? Will these stay cool? <laughs> like I love these pillowcases so much. And on top of that, they're so good for your skin because when you sleep on like cotton pillowcases and stuff, they have a tendency to drag your face around. Silk pillowcases don't allow that to happen. It's got like this slip and this slide vibe to it. So yeah, silk scrunchies and silk pillowcases are definite hair care favorites for me now. And I wanna thank Lily Silk for sponsoring part of this video and sending me these wonderful gifts. I will link these products down below as well as the website itself. There will be codes down below, all that good stuff. Make sure you check it out and get you some silk pillowcases and silk scrunchies and tell me how it works out for you. But I totally forgot to mention, the silk scrunchie gets used also at night. So I use it to section my hair. I use it when I work out, but I also use them to sleep in a braid now. So I sleep in a silk scrunchie on a silk pillow and I can tell there's been a lot less breakage in my hair over the past two months that I've had this stuff. So big fan. So shampoo and conditioner. First of all, I wash my hair once to twice a week. It just depends on what's going on. I can wash it once a week if I'm committed to wearing it up all the time but I am not because it breaks my hair. If it's a heavy filming week, if I've been working out extra hard that week, I can't really get away with it. All the dry shampoo in the world cannot combat how oily my scalp is. But when I do wash, I alternate between three different lines because you know how people used to say like, oh, well, every time you switch shampoo, your hair is just like an amazing condition because your hair got used to the old shampoo. I don't know if that's true. I think it's just that your hair has the ability to benefit from different ingredients in each formula. So let's say your old shampoo had a certain ingredient deck that your hair was responding well to, but then you switch to a different shampoo with a new ingredient deck and it's just a new ingredient. Your hair responds to it. So in my mind, if I switch it up regularly enough, I will see the benefit. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So the shampoo and conditioner I've been using the longest is Kerastase. This is the resistance line, everything on the front of these friggin' bottles is French, so I'm not even gonna bother trying to read it. And I've talked about this line so much, there's really no point in me going far into it, so I'm not going to, but I will link a video down below where I talk about it in a favorites video. This is the line I have the most experience with and I have been using the longest. It's expensive, but it works. It's a great, great, great line. There's gonna be more care styles coming. Get ready for it. The next line that I've been using is the Pureology Strength Care. Strength Care? <laughs> the Strength Cure. This is about, I don't know, maybe a month and a half or so new to me, if you will. Pureology is expensive, just like pretty much everything in this video is gonna be, so please don't judge me. This is a great, great, Great formula. I love how hydrated my hair is after I use it, but it doesn't feel weighed down at all. And I particularly like this one because it's really focused on damaged color treated hair. It's focusing on strengthening the hair so it doesn't break as much. And if you've done as much to your hair as I have, <laughs> and your goal is to keep it long and strong and healthy, you really wanna focus on products that protect the integrity of the hair, and or strengthen it so you don't get that breakage. That's how you get kind of that fried kind of, you know what I'm talking about, where your hair won't grow past a certain point because you bleached it too much. This is a good way to help with that. The last line is from Bumble and Bumble. They actually sent me this. This is the Bond Building Repair Conditioner. I think this is supposed to be kind of their version of Olaplex. And I told you guys before that I had to stop using Olaplex, but I wasn't specific enough and I apologize. What I meant to say in that video was I quit using Olaplex shampoo and conditioner because I think what was happening was I would use the shampoo and conditioner, probably the shampoo more than anything, because it was really getting up in my roots as opposed to the conditioner that stayed down here. I would sweat 
or anything of that nature, probably sweating from working out. And the sweat mixed with like, this is gonna be so disgusting. The sweat mixed with the shampoo would get on my forehead and I was getting these deep cystic breakouts. I was getting them on my back, like it was really bad. I stopped using Olaplex shampoo and conditioner and I stopped having that problem. Now, I know for a fact this isn't exactly the same as Olaplex. They don't have the same proprietary ingredient, but I do like this a lot and my hair, like when it's feeling particularly dry, kind of has that Olaplex like super slick feel when I use this. So I do still enjoy this a lot. It also, side note, smells like the friggin' beach. Like it smells like vacation and I really like it. So I do enjoy this one a lot. And like I said before, these get rotated every wash day. Also two other aspects to my hair cleansing routine is the Whey Detox Shampoo. I've been trying to find a good detox shampoo for a while. I got one from my hairstylist, which I really didn't like. Sorry, Tori, I love you though. I've tried other ones that I didn't feel like really did anything. And like I said before, you guys, my hair, my scalp is oily. So I would just get in these periods where like my roots were just so like stuck to my head. I could tell there was buildup in there and just oil and dirt and goo and grime. And I didn't even know Way made a detox shampoo until very recently. And I've never tried any of their other hair care products. I've tried tons of their styling products, but this one is great. Simply because of the smell, if you guys have been watching me for a while, I've talked about Way many times and the smell of their products just gets me. It does a great job, it has apple cider vinegar. This is something I'm gonna use maybe once a month because I it doesn't strip my hair a ton, but I can feel a little bit of dryness, which is to be expected with a detox shampoo. It's supposed to get everything squeaky clean out of your head. This guy also, so listen to me, this is embarrassing. <laughs> I told you guys in recent videos that I think I started to really become aware of the fact that my skin was probably breaking out pretty bad or at least unnecessarily bad because I wasn't cleansing it thoroughly enough and I made some adjustments there and saw some benefits to it. But then I kind of realized I wasn't really cleaning my hair very well either. At least not, you know when you go to the, sh the salon and like they get up in there and if you got someone like me and Tori's like massaging your head and it's just like <sighs> amazing. Um, and your hair's just like bouncy and so clean and you don't need to wash it again forever. I didn't know what I was doing wrong. So I bought one of these <laughs> on Amazon. It's just a scalp scrubber and like you get in the shower, get your hair all lathered up and then you just get in there and like scrub your scalp, which is ultimately what you should be trying to clean anyway. You don't need to worry about down here. When your hair rinses, it's going to clean the bottom part of your hair. Plus you don't want to dry this out. But I've noticed big differences in how my hair looks, feels, the density of it. I told my hairstylist that I bought one of these and she was talking about how sometimes she can have clients that she can tell if they would just break up their hair more, it would look a lot thicker. So she thought it was really cool that I got one of these. And then I've also heard that scalp stimulation in general is really good for hair growth. So. These are really cool. You get these, there's like tons of them on Amazon. This is, many like it, but this one is mine. Okay, so hair masks and hair treatments. I have four, big shocker. This one is the BB Bond Building Repair Treatment. It just goes with this. I think once again, this is kind of their answer to the Olaplex number three. This is not like that, but I still love, again, how soft and smooth and hydrated this makes my hair feel. You don't have to do it as intensely as the Olaplex number three. It's just in replacement of your shampoo once a week, they recommend this. So I use this about once a month, twice a month. It just depends, again, on how often I'm washing my hair. And again, it smells like the friggin' beach. Hair masks. If you guys have never tried Shu Amora hair care, you are missing out. In fact, if my shower wasn't already completely overrun by hair care at this moment, I would be adding Shuamora shampoo and conditioner to the mix as well because it is the Cadillac Rolls Royce of hair care. And I've always got this mask around ever since I, every time I'm blonde, I have this. This is the Shuamora Urban Moisture. There is nothing like what this mask does for your hair. It is, oh, it is beautiful. Stunningly beautiful. Your hair will feel like brand new hair. The next hair mask from Shuamora that I love is the UB Blonde. UB Blonde. This is newer to me. I was using their balm. And if I hadn't paid like $60 for this, I probably would go back to the balm. The Color Balm, B-A-L-M, that they have is a leave-in treatment that helps with brassiness. But it is it's like a mask, it's like a treatment for your hair where it, it feels soft after you use it. 
This definitely helps with brassiness, but it dries your hair out. <laughs> it's like I used this two weeks ago and it took a couple of washes for my hair to, I was actually kind of worried. I was like, is my hair this damaged? But it was just that I had used this in the recent weeks and it just, it dries your hair out like crazy, but it works. Like I feel like the blonde I have now, which I talk about in the tutorial, is a good mix of warm and neutral, but I don't, there's just like a certain level of warmth I don't like. So I used this, it knocked it out, but at a price, it felt dry for a while. Other than that, no complaints, it's very effective. Like look how friggin' neon pigmented this is. Like it is no joke. I just use it sparingly, use it sparingly. Then for the last treatment is Olaplex number three. I use this one once a month. I can't use it all the time again, like I told you, because this one is designed to go all the way to the root. And once it gets in my roots, I'll work out the next day, I'm gonna get a forehead breakout. So I have to be sparingly with, sparingly? I have to use it sparingly, but it does work. It, it's, it's a cult classic for a reason. So I do like it, it's just not something I can use all the time. After I get out of the shower, okay? So I know this just threw a lot of stuff at you, but on any given wash day, it's literally, just going to be a shampoo and a conditioner. Every other week I'll do a hair mask. Every third week I'll do a detox. <laughs> and then I'm going to get out of the shower obviously and move on to, wow, there's a hair right here in my face. Get out of the way. So I get out of the shower and then I move on to my leave-ins. You guys will notice in the tutorial, I talk about this a lot, like how much I try to protect my hair from heat and that happens a couple of times. So there's a heat protectant in my hair before I blow dry it and then I always put a heat protectant on it before I curl it or do anything else heat related to it. And the leave-in I've been using recently is the Pureology Color Fanatic. I have been using the Kerastase blow dry priming, cement, thermique, whatever, forever. I just wanted to try something new. Um, I like this one because it's a spray and I find that particularly beneficial when I get out of the shower and I don't want to just go into brushing my hair when it's all tangly. So having it in a spray, detangling my hair right out the rip really minimizes how much I'm breaking the hair. Hair brush that I use is the Wet Brush Pro. So this goes in my hair first, just to kind of detangle it. It has a lot of benefits, but my eyes are old and I can't read all of them. <laughs> Essentially, it's just added moisture, it's leave-in conditioner, it's a heat protectant, it's a detangler, it's a color protector, all of the things. And then I will put some of this on the ends of my hair as well. This is the Olaplex number no. seven bonding oil. This just kind of right here to add that extra hydration to the ends so they don't look so dry. Also, I forgot to mention, I use these microfiber towels. This one is just like very particularly meant for your hair because less damage, less breakage. I hear a lot of people use t-shirts, old t-shirts, supposed to work, but these work for me. Speaking of blow dryers, I finally caved and bought this thing. This is the Dyson hair dryer. It is 400 big American boffos and I felt really ridiculous buying it at the time, but I am dedicated to my hair game, so it's fine. It'll last forever. It came with a bunch of attachments. It works really well. I've never used a blow dryer like this before. In fact, when I first got it, I was like taken aback by how powerful it was. You ever seen those like videos where they take like a leaf blower and put it on people's faces and it's like shoots their <laughs> face skin back? That's kind of how I felt. This thing is very powerful and it's really easy to adjust the heat on it, which I like a lot, as well as the strength of the wind force power. Blow dries your hair really fast. It feels really smooth after you do. Less damage, the better. So I like it. I don't really have like any definitive buy it or don't buy it opinions. If you've been on the fence and you're serious about your hair, I don't think you'll regret this, but I absolutely don't think it's necessary or reasonable for most people. So don't assume if you don't have this, you're just a schlub and aren't taking care of your hair. You'll live, but if you've been on the fence, and you wanna save up for it, I'm glad I did. So next I'm gonna talk about kind of like what I do to keep my ends hydrated throughout the week if I'm trying to extend the life of a, of a hair wash. So, you know, at this point I've got piles of dry shampoo in my roots, therefore my ends are starting to feel a little dry. So there's some products I like to use to kind of help combat that. And the first two 
I don't use as much as the other two I'm going to show you, but I do use them. <laughs> this is the Olplex number six bond smoother and the number seven bonding oil. There is a YouTuber here on YouTube named Abby Young. I believe her name is. I'll link her channel down below. She did a whole video about how we're all using Olaplex incorrectly. <laughs> and she talked about how she actually uses these as like a leave-in treatment. She puts a little bit of this and a little bit of this together in her hair to sleep in on your silk pillow with your silk uh, scrunchie. And it's a little more effective than trying to use this on wet hair and then blow drying it. And I agree, because as much as I like Olaplex, like I said, it really makes my hair feel weighed down and kind of oily and like sticky. So using it that way on dry hair is like a leave-in before I go to bed. I've definitely been enjoying doing it that way. This combination I don't use as much, or at least I haven't been using as long as the other two. The first is the Kerastase Elixir Ultime, whatever you can tell I'm about to run out of this. I actually bought the blonde one, which I'll talk about in a minute. The one that comes in this packaging in a Sephora haul. I don't think I like that one. A, I don't really love the fragrance and B, it was only almost too much, too much oil. This is perfect. I put this on my hair particularly when I'm styling it. Like after I curl it, sometimes I'll run a little bit through the ends again, just to make them look hydrated, glossy, really smooth. And the other one is the Kerastase Blonde Absolute eight hour miracle serum or whatever. I've been using the other version, the OG version of this for over a year now. I've always got it on me. It's such a good, like nourishing, hydrating, it's like serum. Like when you go to bed with a serum on, you're supposed to do that the same way with these eight hour products that Kerastase makes. This just happens to be one particularly formulated for blondes. I don't know if I tell a difference between this one and the other one in terms of like it being for blonde hair, except for the smell. Kind of smells like Christmas trees to me, but I like it. I like it. Real quick, let's cut away to this tutorial. Stay with me now. We're in the home stretch. Okay, so I haven't done anything to my hair yet but I'm gonna take it out of my Lily Silk scrunchie. And this is my hair before anything has happened to it. We are on day three. Yeah, day three, I've worked out once, so there's a good bit of dry shampoo in my hair. And obviously, as I told you guys in the video, one of my goals is not to uh, heat style it very often, not to blow dry it very often, and therefore not to wash it very often. In other words, the least, the less amount of times I wash it, the less amount of times I have to put heat on it. So I haven't washed my hair in a couple days. I was trying to ride it out as long as possible. And this is what we are left with. First, I'm gonna take this stuff called the BB Pret a Powder. This is a product I have a love-hate relationship with. Sometimes I totally get the hype and sometimes I'm like, does this do anything at all? Uh, but because we are on day three, like I said, and I've worked out, I think I'm gonna need a little bit by way of extra dry shampoo and you can use this stuff as like a volumizing powder or as kind of a dry shampoo or both. So I'll just start putting that in my roots and just kind of working it in. Oh wow, word to the wise, uh, don't use this stuff in your clothes. Excellent. I'm gonna put a little bit on the back section of my hair Mostly because I don't have a defined uh, part back here. Like some people get this cool little swoop action. My part wants to go like all the way down the back of my head. So anything I can do to kind of give a little bit more life to the back of my head, if you will, the better. <sighs> okay. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is part slightly on the side. Listen to me, Gen Z. You can have my side part when you pry it out of my cold, dead hand. <laughs> Not everybody looks good with just a middle part. I don't know what to tell y'all. Like, give me a break. <laughs> so I just think I look better with a side part, quite frankly. I tried the no bangs down the middle, straight hair for, I don't know, off and on for about two years or so. I just, I don't think, I don't think it's the vibe for me. I actually really like my side part. And because this hairstyle in particular kind of reminds me of like, an old, like a modern old Hollywood thing, and I love that look, it it suits me fine, I don't care. I'm not a big trend chaser anyway, so it's not a big deal to me if this style is not like, you know, TikTok famous or whatever. So essentially this is kind of the silhouette we're gonna create with the hair. We're gonna do a little zhuzhing on the top, 
but obviously we need to start with curling. I just like to go ahead and part it first so that I am like, when I get to the top, I've already got that part, no pun intended, dealt with. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of my hair up using my Lily Silk scrunchie. I'm not gonna walk you through every step of curling my hair, that would be very repetitive, but I am gonna take you through at least two sections. Each section I'm gonna start by spraying with Hot Toddy from Dry Bar. It's a heat protectant I've been using for a while now, probably about a year and a half. I like it because the spray is so fine. It's so fine. I'm gonna brush that through the hair. So first I thought I'd start by telling you guys about how I'm going to curl my hair and why. I was using a curling wand for a really long time, literally since like spring 2011, and I started using a curling iron with a wand about two months ago. And that's mostly because I've tried many different wands. I don't really feel like there's a difference between one or the other, but my hair won't hold a curl. I mean, it does it a little bit better now because there's so much bleach on it, but when I didn't have any bleach or hair dye on it for about two years, it wouldn't hold anything. Like my hair is just slick, very straight, very slick in terms of its texture. I have fine hair, but I have a lot of it so I'm told. And I find that using a curling iron with a clamp, not only is it quicker, I genuinely feel like it's quicker to uh, curl my hair this way and it's also more enjoyable simply for the fact that it's like a one-handed action as opposed to two and your arms get all tired and stuff. But it holds better, like I said before, and I just like the curl that I get. This is a Hot Tools one inch. I got it at Ulta. I'll leave it down below. I tried this with an inch and a quarter, a quarter of an inch, no, an inch and a quarter before, and I don't feel like it held as well. So I'm guessing my hair just does better with a smaller barrel because it is so fine. Every time I say that, it, it just wants to really relax and let go of that curl quickly if I use a larger size barrel. So use a barrel that will work for you. Mostly, I'm just gonna teach you guys how to use a curling iron with a clamp today, or I'm gonna try to. This is kind of like winged liner. If you haven't done winged liner before, or if you think you're just gonna watch someone do it and it's gonna click, it's not gonna happen. You have to practice. It took me about two days of just kind of practicing this in front of the mirror at night before I went to bed before it kind of clicked. So what you wanna do is take the curling wand. You always want the clamp to face out. So face the mirror. As long as you can always see the clamp, it will always curl away from your face and that's what we're gonna do. I know some people say to rotate curls inward and outward. I don't like how that looks on me, so they pretty much all go out. So you wanna bring the clamp up about as high as you can get it, turn it away from you, and start applying and releasing pressure on the clamp while you rotate it. And I'm not gonna take it down very far because I kinda of like to keep it looser a, I just think it looks a little bit more modern, and B, it makes my hair look longer. The more I take this curl all the way down to the ends, the shorter my hair will look. I think that's kind of obvious for most people. So just like a little wave in the center, I let it hang out for like one, two, three, four, five seconds, and I let it go, and that's what I get. Also, starting from the back, I think is easier because you don't have to kind of like fight your way through what you've already done, if you will. Again, curling iron is facing my mirror. I'm rotating it away from me and I'm turning it while I release the pressure. Bada bing, bada boom. So we have our curl, we're turning it away. See how I'm letting this hair is constantly coming in from the bottom? Don't let where your end is go above the part closest to your head. So it should just basically be going around the curling wand the way that it's coming out of your head. The root is at the top and the end is at the bottom. That seems like common sense, but if you get it kind of wrapped the wrong way, it won't come out right. So I'm just gonna move on with the rest of my hair and I'll come back when I get to the top. Okay, so when I, what I consider the top is like a very small amount of hair. Okay, so for these top bits, I'm gonna curl it the same way And if you actually want to create this style, like with this like old school, like kind of 50s vibe, you need bangs. So these are mine. They're not short bangs by any stretch of the imagination, but you need them because if it's all kind of one length 
in the front of your hair, then this kind of like swoop action, the kind of lift won't happen. And I know the styling for everybody, like I said, it's just something I really like personally. So with the front bits, I get it in the curling iron the same way I have been, but I leave it in for like a second. And for my whole head, I have curled it and I haven't touched it. So I always let them cool for a little while. So they definitely look really quince right now, but I will kind of finger comb them in a minute and they'll loosen up a little bit. Okay, so the hair is totally curled. I'm gonna start on this side so that this side can have a few more moments to cool. The good news about that bumble and bumble powder we started with is it kind of like reactivates itself, if that makes any sense. I'm gonna take a teasing comb. I don't tease my hair very much. I try not to style it very much, like I said, but this is kind of crucial to this part of the hairstyle is just to kind of get this lift off the head a little bit and you kind of want to like shape it. For hairspray, I'm using the Pureology Soft Finish. This is like a little sample that made its way into my shopping bag at Ulta a couple weeks ago and I'm definitely going to pick up the full size of this because I really like it. It's really lightweight, I like the way it smells, it's not crunchy. Prior to getting my hair dyed blonde, I used to be obsessed with texturizing hairsprays because my hair had no texture to it, but now it does. So I don't want a lot of crunchiness. I don't like a lot of stickiness. So this is absolutely perfect for that. So I'm gonna tease this side as well. But the way I'm gonna do it is kind of like to the side. And it's just the bang portion, just to kind of, like I said, create that little like swoopy thing. There's really no skill to it on my part. It's just a byproduct of the bangs. I feel like Veronica Lake. All right, guys, let's wrap this up. Thank you so much to the patrons. Like I said at the top of the video, we have our book club meeting on, I think I said May 2nd. And we'll be discussing the 12 week year. There will be a video going up over there a couple of days prior so that everyone can get acclimated to the idea behind the book and hopefully be able to participate even if you didn't get to read it. I don't know what May's book club is going to be yet. I have a couple of ideas. Um, I'm always taking suggestions. If you guys have any really good nonfiction books, please let me know down below and I'll look into them. Other than that, I hope you're having an amazing day. I hope you got something out of this video. Links to everything will be down below. Thank you, Lily Silk, for sponsoring this video. And I'm gonna let y'all get out of here because I know I'm tired of hearing myself talk. <laughs> hope you guys are having an amazing day. Bye.